Hi friends, this is Nilesh Jogal from Jogi Safe Tech Private Limited. In this video, I am going to give you the brief introduction of the Hazard Study. I will share you the fundamental things about when this Hazard Study should be conducted, what are the prerequisites of this study, how a team of Hazard Study is formed, what is the worksheet, how the actual Hazard Study goes, and finally, I will share you some do's and don'ts so that you can conduct this study very effectively. I hope you will have the basic understanding of Hazard Study after going through this video. Friends, Hazard Study can be conducted during the any stage of the process life cycle, but the ideal time to conduct this study would be when basic and detailed engineering is complete and the P and IDs are ready for review. So the ideal time to conduct this HAZOP study would be once basic and detailed engineering is complete and P and IDs are ready. Let us understand that this study can be conducted during the any stage of the process life cycle, but at that time the methodology and the deliverable of this study would be different. For example, this study can be conducted even in an operational plant, but at that time the deliverables and methodology would have to be slightly customized. If you are interested to know more about what are the deliverables and methodology if we conduct has of study at different different stages, I would request you to visit our website. Let us now understand what are the requirements, the prerequisites to conduct this HAZOP study. The first requirement would be a detailed description of the process for which we are going to do this HAZOP study. The second requirement would be P and ID or process and instrumentation diagram. It is also said piping and instrumentation diagram. The third thing which is very important in this study would be the details about your alarms your trips, controls, interlocks, etc. This is also called cause and effect diagram. These three things are basic requisite to conduct a hazard study effectively. In some cases, we may have to refer some specific documents, for example, layout or design documents for a specific requirement. Otherwise, these three things would be sufficient enough to conduct a hazard study. The team of HAZOP study consists of a HAZOP chairman, the HAZOP scribe and the participants. Now let me tell you the roles of these team members. HAZOP chairman has the role to moderate the discussion, to guide the people and to conclude when the discussion is over. So he is the overall in charge of this entire study. The scribe writes this discussion in the tabulated form in the prescribed format of the worksheet. This is the role of the scribe and the participants, the team members has the role to give inputs about the process as and when asked by the HAZOP chairman during the different different stages of the HAZOP. The ideal size would be 5 to 10 only. If the team size is too big, it may lead to take too much time, waste of time in indeliberate discussions and it may lead to take too much time to complete this study and at the same time if the team size is too small for example only two to three people are conducting the study it may lead to biased study depending on the views of only two to three people who are conducting the study the participants of this study should be the representatives from different different departments like process operation maintenance safety R&D etc Finally, the worksheet for conducting has of study. You can prepare your worksheet either in Excel or Word format. You can customize your worksheet as per your requirements. You can also use any software which is available in the market to conduct this study and different different worksheet formats are available. But I'll tell you how a typical worksheet looks like. As you can see, the worksheet would contain note description, some process parameters and some basic details in the upper part of the worksheet. Then will be a tabulated form with different different columns. The columns of table are guide word, parameter, deviation, causes, consequences, 
safeguards and finally recommendations. This is the simplest form of HAZOP worksheet. Sometimes risk matrix is also added in this worksheet which I will discuss later. But I think for beginners this worksheet should be sufficient. Let us now understand how a HAZOP study is conducted. The first step is identification of nodes. As you know, the entire process is divided into different different P and IDs. And again, this individual P and IDs has to be subdivided into what is called small small nodes. Now let us understand what this node is. The node is the small part of the P and ID and it is identified based on the what is called design intention or the process function. To make it simple, in a node only those parts of the systems are included which are having the same process functions. So in a P and ID when the process function or the design intention changes a separate node begins. This is how different different nodes are identified on the P and ID. It is a tricky part and some experience and expertise would be required to identify the correct node length or what is called node boundary. We have identified the node now. HAZOP is conducted node wise. So now let us consider we have already identified one node. For this particular node, we will have to identify all process deviations which are applicable and relevant for that particular node. Now what is this deviation? The deviation is the combination of two different different phrases. The one is guide word, the another one is process parameters. There are several set of guide words like high, low, no, more, etc. And there are several process parameters as well like temperature, pressure, flow, level, conductivity, pH and likewise. So by combining these two different phrases that is guide word and process parameters, we will identify various deviations which are applicable for this node. So what could be the deviations friends? They could be high pressure for example low pressure, high flow, low flow, high level, low level etc. So you can identify all the process deviations which are applicable for that particular node. We have identified the nodes first. Then for each node we have identified various process deviations also. Now for each deviation we would identify what are the causes which will lead to this particular deviation. For example, we have identified high pressure for that particular node. Now we will identify what are the basic causes which will lead to occur high pressure and we will list all these causes one by one. The next step would be to identify the consequences for each process deviations. Now while identifying the consequences you will have to be a bit cautious. You will have to consider two things. You will have to keep these two things in your mind when you identify the consequences due to process deviations. What are they? I will tell you. Number one, when you identify the consequences, please consider that you should identify the consequences due to process deviation only not due to causes. Yes, when you write the consequences, it should be due to the deviation irrespective of the causes. This is one thing you should consider. Another thing, when you write the consequences, consider for a while that there is no safeguard available in the process at all. Yes, when you write the consequences for a while, consider that there is no safeguard and in absence of safeguard, what are the probable consequences that should be identified. Once the consequences are identified, next would be 
to identify the available safeguard in the process setup. Now what are these safeguards? It could be alarms, it could be trips, it could be controls, it could be SOPs, it could be anything which should be capable to prevent the process deviation or the cause of the process deviation or it should be capable to save you from the consequences. So the safeguards should be actually available in the system and it should be capable to nullify either the consequences or the cause or the process deviation itself. These are the actual safeguards which you should identify one by one. You have identified the process deviation. You have identified the causes of the deviation. You have identified the consequences if that deviation occurs. Now you have listed the safeguards also. Now if this safeguard is not adequate to prevent you from these consequences, you will have to go for the recommendations. Now what kind of recommendations you can give? The recommendations should be such that they should be capable either to reduce your consequences or to reduce the causes or at all they should be capable to prevent the process deviations from occurrence itself. They would be the right recommendations. So I have explained the typical process for one node and for one process deviation. Now you will have to repeat the same thing for next process deviation then another process deviation and the old process deviations which are likely to occur for that particular node. Once this is done then you can switch over to next node and similarly you can cover all the nodes and you can cover all the P and IDs and that way you can do the hazard study for the entire process. So this is the simplest and fundamental flow of various activities of a HAZOP study. Now at last, let me share some very important things about the limitations and scope of HAZOP study. At the same time, let me share you some do's and don'ts for conducting this study very effectively. First of all, friends, let us understand that HAZOP is not a tool for design validation. Yes, in HAZOP design validation is not done. So that means while we conduct a HAZOP study, it is believed that design is adequate. Number two, P and IDs. As I shared, P and IDs are very important to conduct any HAZOP study. So we should be very cautious when we use the P and IDs. There should be updated and as built because in any HAZOP study what doesn't appear in the P&ID is not considered to be actually existing in the site. Otherwise we will have to update our P&IDs first before we conduct the HAZOP study. The third thing when we identify the causes of the process deviation we should be cautious that we should not consider the failure of control logics and control system as the cause of our deviation. This we should take care of. And the fourth thing, when there are two or more similar systems, similar trains, then if we conduct HAZOP study for only one system, it need not be repeated for the remaining systems which are quite identical in process. And lastly, let me give you some understanding about incorporating a risk matrix in the worksheet of HAZOP. Risk matrix comprises of three different columns that is severity, probability or frequency and lastly the risk. It could be a 5 by 5 matrix or 4 by 4 matrix. Now what is the use of risk matrix? Risk matrix helps us in prioritization of the risk risk matrix which is having three columns is incorporated after consequence after safeguard and in some cases even after recommendations when a risk matrix follows by the consequences that means when the risk matrix is introduced immediately after the consequences it gives us how severe is the risk how big is the risk due to this consequence this will sensitize us to go for scrutinizing our safeguards 
when the risk matrix is incorporated after the safeguard it helps us in evaluating the efficacy of our safeguard whether they are capable to reduce risk or not and when the risk matrix is incorporated after the recommendation it again gives us some insight about whether our recommendations are adequate enough to bring the risk level down or not so this is how actually risk matrix are incorporated at different different places and that way it gives us help in prioritization of the risk so this is how actually risk matrix are incorporated at different different places but for the beginners if you are doing this study for the first time incorporation of the risk matrix you can skip and you can make the worksheet very simple so that it will not take too much of time in filling this risk matrix for each and every process deviations i hope you will be able to participate well in the hazop sessions which are likely to be conducted in your company at the same time i would advise to participate in more and more hazop studies to understand this process well so friends i hope this video has given you some basic understanding about the hazop study keep learning keep watching thank you